But the ultimate and most dangerous test was a huge, specially constructed vacuum chamber. They were able to pull all of the air out, create a big vacuum, just like it would be on the moon. That way we could test our suits to make sure there was no leakage. One such test narrowly avoided disaster. Jim LeBlanc was the test subject in the vacuum chamber. Cliff Hess, the supervising engineer outside. Jim, while you're exercising, I'd like you to stay intermediate all the time. Okay. I'm pretty cool right now. Okay, well, you'll warm up here in a minute, so let's stay right here if you can stand it. The testing started just normally, like they all do. Uh, and Jim was at a vacuum in a spacesuit. Well, I feel pretty good here. With all the air sucked out, all that protected him was his pressurized suit. Then something happened. I heard over the headset that he was losing suit pressure. The tube pressurizing his suit had become disconnected. He was in serious danger. There really wasn't any feeling. It was just happening so fast, you know, trying to get the chamber back to a safe pressure and Jim to a safe pressure was inside the suit. As I stumbled backwards, I could feel the saliva on my tongue starting to bubble just before I went unconscious. And that's kind of the last thing I remember. Uh, essentially, he had no pressure on the outside of his body and that's a very unusual case to get, and there's very little in the medical literature as to what happens when you have that. There's a lot of conjecture, you know, that your fluids will boil. Within 25 seconds, a co-worker, sitting in a partially pressurized antechamber and wearing an oxygen mask, was able to dash in. At the normal rate of repressurization, it would have taken 30 minutes to make the chamber safe. Hess repressurized it in just over a minute. That's much, much faster than you would ever come down in an airplane. It would uh, really hurt your ears if you did that. Finally, it was safe to let a doctor in. Miraculously, LeBlanc had already regained consciousness. When I stood up, in the chamber, I felt fine. My ears ached a little bit uh, from the course of rapid repressurization, and uh, that's basically the only effect I had. You know, this was one of the few instances where anybody was ever exposed to that low of a pressure and lived to tell about it with no obvious damage. Such an accident in space would have been fatal. But thanks to testing like this, no astronaut has ever had to face a similar situation. 